this is Latifa with the Quilt Engineer. Um, today I'm going to share with you the method for piecing clam sh your clamshells for your Glam Clam quilt to piece it pinless without pins and also um, it's a couple of techniques that will minimize the needs for ironing until your quilt top is finished. So hopefully all of you have your clams all cut out. Here's all of my stacks. This is going to be a lap size quilt. There's eight, 19 rows there. Um, it's all cut out and I have my rows separated. Hopefully you have that stage done as well. It'll really help in this process and make it come together easily and look like you want it to look at the end of the quilt. I start off um, just sewing one row at a time so I generally place the whole rest of the stack to the right of my machine to kind of get it out of the way. I've sewn the, sewn the first row for you already, so you see that here. Um, those are a couple of the templates for the first row uh, as templates A, B, and then C, which is the mirror image of A, so I usually only cut out one. So you basically sew them, excuse me, sew them end to end like this, filling in the center, what I call the thong piece, but the center pieces connect them all together and the final result will be, or sew them all together and final result will look pretty much like this. So that's my row number one. Um, you can follow the pattern for that portion. The part that you will learn in this video is how to sew your clams in. So in the pattern I had to separate your rows two and one uh, into two different piles, two A and two B. We don't have to do this and so we'll just consider that tab the tap for row two. Set that aside. The clams are pieced in from the left to the right. So they're pieced in um, starting at this section here and continue to the right. So that's how you stack your, your pile for that row as well. So pick the top one up. You're going to place the clamshell on your machine right side up so you see the print or the top side of your fabric up and then upside down so that little tip piece is going to face away from you. We'll place that on your machine. We're going to start piecing the clamshell from the right side when it's in this placement from the right side. So we'll just place that right there. And then this is the section that it's going to be pieced into. And um, we're going to place that also on top of the clamshell upside down so the wrong side of your fabric is going to be facing up. You'll see your seam here. You'll always see your seams here because you're going to be building onto this top as you go along. But that section that you're going to sew the clam into, instead of putting the right side, we're going to match the left side of that section with the right side of the clamshell. So go ahead and put that under your presser foot. I use a quarter inch presser foot here because um, it makes piecing the clamshells really easy because you don't have to worry about maintaining a quarter inch seam. Just as long as that um, those two fabrics are butted right up against that side of the presser foot, you'll be great. So I start off by making just two or three stitches. This is just to hold that end in place so it won't go anywhere and it's sewn together. Then we'll match the first tab. This is the magic of this pattern are the tabs. It makes it piecing so much easier because you don't have to worry about that curve being centered in that section. If you match it with tab, I hold that generally with my left hand. And I just hold it onto, you can hold it in your hand this way or you can just hold it together with the finger on um, the bed of your machine. And then you're going to ease these two fabrics so that the two edges are matched up or lined up and then you're going to sew that quarter inch seam. You may have to take to stop periodically because it is curve piecing and that top piece will have a tendency to bunch and to readjust. I love my knee, leaf, knee, knee lift on my um, Janome but you can also use the regular lift for the presser foot on your machine at the back. That generally is at the side or the back. Um, so we'll continue sewing onto the tab. And most machines that I've worked with doing this pattern, um, it usually that tab will slide right under your um, quarter inch foot. It usually doesn't get in the way. Stop at that first tab. Adjust your fabric in your pattern. I generally pull the top to the back and pull the clamshell itself to the front. 
match that second, so the second tab will be matched with the middle seam. And then once again, you just adjust the fabric to match up and sew away. Um, do take your time until you get the hang of it. You'll get a little bit more proficient as you go along and it moves a lot quicker. Uh, but just beginning out, take your time with it. Make sure the two fabrics are, are matched up along that end and you'll come out with perfect clams. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. We'll match the next two tabs. And adjust it. So it's bunching a little bit, so we'll make sure we'll lift that presser foot, readjust the fabric. And of course, at the end, we'll match up the two end pieces. This is the only place where you may want to um, use a pan. And I say that because of the fact that sometimes it's hard to hold onto those two end pieces and keep them together as they're feeding under your presser foot, especially when you're piecing the smaller patterns, um, the smaller template pieces. So this is an eight inch clown, and there are also four and six inch available. So with the smaller templates, you really may want to, um, just to make sure that that end goes together well, you're just gonna take a straight pin and pin it in this direction in your fabric so that um, when you come close to the pin that you can pull it out easily. And voila, your first clamshell is pressed. Now when I say you can do this without ironing, we're going to do a bit of finger pressing so that our seams um, fall in the right direction and they don't get in the way of the next clown. So when we flip that over, we're just going to finger press the seam towards the clamshell. So until the, you get to the last row, all of your seams will be pressed towards the clamshell. If you're not comfortable with finger pressing that, you can just take it to your ironing board and, and press the whole seam down, which works, it works both ways. I've done it both ways. And then you'll do the next thing for the next clamshell. Right side up, upside down, place it with the right side of that clamshell against your, um, against your presser foot there. Once again, this is the section that it's going to be pieced into. We flip that upside down so the wrong side is up. And also it's upside down so the tips are pointing in that direction. We place the left side of this curve and match it up with the right side of the clamshell. And you do the same thing and you repeat and repeat and repeat until you have your clamshell quilt. Let's take a closer look at the whole process. Once again that clamshell is going to be fabric right side up and upside down so your tip it's going to be pointing away from you. You're going to match up the right side of the clamshell with the left side of the section that it's going to be sewn into. Stitch the first few stitches needle down just to hold that end of that fabric in place. Next you're going to match up the first set of tabs. You will adjust the two uh, fabric edges so that they match up so that you can sew your edge together. You will have to readjust as you work along, um, both by making sure the edges meet as well as um, lifting the presser foot up and readjusting the fabric underneath the presser foot so that it's not bunched. You sew into that first tab, needle down, and then we're going to match up the next section. This time we'll be matching up that middle seam the middle seam with the middle tab on the clamshell. You may want to lock stitch the end of your stitches when you're piecing this. Um, as you can tell there is a little bit of pulling and tugging on the fabric and um, the ends will separate if you don't as you can see in my example here. So you may want to lock stitch it just to make sure. Once again you just Continue to adjust to make sure the edges of the fabric are matching up. And you sew to the next tab. Stop with your needle down once again. And you continue. Do the same thing for the next section. Match it up. Adjust so the edges meet up. And you sew. 
You notice how nice that quarter inch seam is for sewing this. You don't have to worry about, am I sewing a quarter inch seam as you go around? You can just make sure it's butted right up against that. And the tabs, generally, I've worked on um, this machine, which is a Janome, as well as the Viking. And with both of the quarter inch feet on both of those machines, that fabric from the tab slides nicely right under that, that edge of that foot. The pin here really helps to hold that in. Make sure that the pin is facing towards your foot so that you can pull it out easily. Um, in this example, the pin already starts to pull itself out a bit at the end, but um, you will want to start to pull that pin out before it goes under your needle, so before you actually sew over it, you don't want to sew over that pin. The pin, of course, is really, really useful um, when you're sewing those smaller clams for those brave sews out there who want to sew the 4-inch or the 6-inch clams. Lock stitch and cut it off. And there you have your clown. Now we're going to take a quick look at finger pressing and how it reduces the need for ironing and therefore makes this quilt really quick to go together. So after each clamshell is sewn in, we would simply use your finger or your thumb or possibly your thumbnail, which I like to use, to press that seam to one side. After each row is completed, we want to make sure that those seams are pressed to th towards the clamshells so that we can uh, easily sew in the next row of clamshells. One thing to note, we're not pressing or finger pressing the whole seam down. We're only finger pressing that last three quarters to maybe an inch um, of the seam so that when we put in the next clamshell that it goes in smoothly and without puckers. If you prefer ironing, you absolutely can. I would recommend though that you finger press between each clamshell and then after one row is complete, then you take that to the ironing board and you would press that whole row. Of course, you're pressing your seams towards your clamshell, making sure there's no bunching. Thanks so much. For, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching today. Please visit me at thequiltengineer.com. You can also download the 4-inch, 6-inch, 8-inch, and 12-inch Glam Clown pattern and templates for free on Craftsy.com. Just search for Glam Clown. Thanks again. Have a great day.